Hello and welcome to the Splunk app for behavioral profiling, an app which enables you to deploy easy detection of behavioral anomalies at scale in complex environments and then aggregate these anomalies to highlight and profile the specific entities which are affecting resilience in your organization. This could be applied to any number of use cases, but in today's demonstration, I'm going to be walking through the domain of fraud, where teams are tasked with locating increasingly sophisticated uh, attackers, employing me methods across physical and digital channels, and where the Splunk app for behavioral profiling can help identify the potential fraudsters in your environment through their unusual behavior. The first thing you'll see when you're in the app is this home page here, which walks through a number of the concepts explored in the app, but also a free level architecture, which the app uses. Uh, the first of those levels is indicators, behavioral indicators. And these are essentially metrics of behavior for the entities that you're profiling. So for example, today we'll be walking through uh, transaction sum made by a potential entity. The second level is scoring rules, and that's where we take all of those recordings, those metrics in the defined by the behavioral indicators and profile them to understand which are anomalous and then score those anomalous uh, behavioral indicators. So, for example, today we'll be identifying which of those transaction sums are anomalous. And then the third level is where we take those anomalous scores aggregate them by entity and view and investigate the entities which are coming out as as behaving most anomalously. So the first thing you'll want to do when you download the app is go to configure, configure, configure indexes and collections. And there's just a very brief thing you have to do there. We define the various data indexes that will be used by the app. After that, you go to deploy and new indicator. And what we're going to do first is define that indicator search. So you'll see here when we go to this new indicator page, we're asked to select a build mode. The app itself leverages two different build modes, the first of which is guided, where there's drop down menus to help people who aren't as familiar with SPL or would simply like to take the easier route. And then we have custom mode as well for people who are familiar with Splunk's search processing language. What we're going to be doing is just going down the guided mode route today out of simplicity. Now, the app itself can build these behavioral detections using just one line of SPL, and we define it here. So what we're going to do is point towards our raw data. So we're going to put index equals payment transactions here. As I said, we're going through the fraud context. We want to have a look at our payment data. I hit enter and I see all of the events from the previous day. Next, I go down the dashboard and I identify my entity field. So this is going to be the field in that raw data, which relates and uniquely identifies the entity that we are looking at. And the entities we're going to be looking at and identifying if they are potentially fraudulent is customers. That's what we're going to be aligning all of our score scores to. So I just have to identify the field which identifies our customers, which is customer here and then highlight any other important fields that I'll use to build my indicator. So that could be, for example, the branch they've gone to, the app version they've used if they're online. I'm going to keep it really simple here and just use the amount field, because what we're going to be doing is tracking the volume that they are potentially um, transacting. So I click next to find a new indicator search, and then I go down to the bottom of this dashboard here and create my indicator. So I'm going to take that amount field that we have, use the function drop down menu and say that I'm going to take the sum of those amounts and split it by our, into hourly buckets. And just by using those drop down menus, I've now turned without using any sort of query language, um, my raw data into these metrics of behavior, the transacted amount uh, sum, by each customer in a given hour window. And it's simple as that. We can see they range from nearly 9,000 all the way down to 28, right? So very simple indicator rule, how much are our customers attempting to transact? So I click review, save new indicator. I'm gonna call this um, amount transacted hourly window customer 
very concise, but it will do. And then I'm going to go down here and click search window and switch that to daily. Review my SPL that's generated on the back end. So this is the search which, which will be run. I am going to have a backfill. And then by clicking build, what it will have done is created our new search, our amount transacted hourly window by customer search, scheduled it to run every day at midnight, created a associated uh, key value store entry, which retains certain metadata around our search and has immediately run it as a backfill. So that means now that when we go to new scoring rule, and I and I walk through this section, it's already generated that we've only all we've done really is point it towards the index and just told it what we want to see. And it's defined our new indicator for us. So now we've got those values. We now need to work out what is considered anonymous anomalous for them. So there's two different modes here for scoring rule within the app. The first one is entity group. That's where you are defining what is normal and what is abnormal through the entire group of entities. So there's one normal and one non-normal for everyone. The second version is entity specific, and that's where the individual entities are baselined on an entity, to, entity by entity basis to understand what's normal for that specific customer. Uh, for the purposes of today's demo, I'm just going to walk through the simpler version, which is the entity group rule. So when I scroll down, it's already populated this data view with the data that we've just created. So we can see our amount transacted hourly window by customer. We can see the amounts populating over here. And now I just have to define what my scoring field is, which is going to be some amount, which is the thing that we created. And then I define my scoring criteria. And for entity group rules in the app, there are three different options. The simplest is conditional logic. That's where we say anything over 9,000 or anything that equals a particular value is considered an anomaly, and we want that to be scored. The second one is standard deviation. That's where we say two, three, four standard deviations away from the norm is going to be our normal threshold. And anything beyond that, we're going to have marked as an anomaly. And the third one leverages machine learning and Splunk's machine learning toolkit to deploy a anomaly detection density function to highlight which are normal and which are not. And that's the one we're going to be using in today's demo. So I'm going to select that, click next, scroll down. And we can now see all of our data distributed in this diagram here, again, without having to use any form of SPL whatsoever. So we can see the distribution type. We've just got it on auto. If you're familiar with the various different distribution types we've got here, normal, exponential, you can define them yourselves. Auto just picks the best one. And then we have our outlier threshold. Currently, we've got it 0 0.001. So if I increase that value, it will, it will increase the range of of space that an anomaly can sit in and we can see that for the which i will do for the purpose of today's demo and we can see the number of different anomalies that have been picked out now all the way down here 30 of them in total i'm going to leave that as that although it may obviously that would create quite a bit of noise in, in a production environment and then we score these anomalies so this is about determining how much we want to attribute to a given entity based on how much of an anomaly we've got here. So what I'm going to do here is select attribution value times scoring field. You can see what our scoring field values are here. So our biggest one is 9,553. Our lowest for the anomalies is 4,872. And I'm going to multiply each of those by 0 0.001, which I'm going to take a zero out of that. And what that's done is it's, given a dynamic score based on how large of an anomaly it is to each of our entities. So we can see that K here, score of 96, that's because they've got a scoring field value of 9,553, whereas we take the lowest of these values, 4,872, Jennifer has got 49 because we've times her value by 0.01. So quite a simple system. We're going to then save our rule. We're going to call it... Uh, anomalous large transaction sum one hour we're going to have this run daily again just like our indicator search we can see the spl that's generated here and we're going to run an immediate backfill and we can now make sure that 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 has run and it's all run perfectly well so now we've had we've created two searches one of which is creating all of our various indicator values and then one which is profiling that group and understanding which ones are the anomalies 
And we've done that without having to need much about machine learning at all. We haven't needed to know how to write any of these Splunk searches. And this is now a scalable way of deploying these detections in a way which will now run every single day. But the crucial bit then is what do we actually do with this information? So now we've we've built those searches. We go to Entity Behavior Scores dashboard, and this is a dashboard where we select what our entity field here is. So customer here, but it could be any number of things depending on what what your entity group is. We can see the total score across all our entities, how that's changed over the last four weeks, what the distribution is, and we want to see this nice big spike here where we can see that something has been profiled as being significantly worse than everything else which is good well or not good depending on, on on whether you want anyone to be doing anything fraudulent within your business and then we scroll down here and this is really the key part this is where we have now a prioritized list by behavioral score of all of our entities we can see their ranking we can see all of the different rules that they've broken. So we can see R1 here, anomalous large transaction sum one hour, high distance from average uh, from ad odd address transaction there as well, um, high count of transactions, a few different things there. And we can see when they were last reviewed. So they were reviewed on August the 14th as well. So quite often it would seem that they're engaging in this sort of behavior. So what I can do is then go on the, on the customer, Adina, I can see where their score is in relation to the last four weeks. I can see where they sit on the uh, percentile wise. I can see how many lower, higher, or equal to them. And I can also see the breakdown by rule over time and in terms of score volume. And so if we click on the one that we've just built, anomalous large transaction sum, scroll down, you can see the raw events that contributed to that. So we can see I've had a number of transactions of five, uh, of sum of 5,595 and the score attributions that they received through their various rules as well. And then if we wanted to, we can also just drill down to the raw data, remove the part of the search, which turn, and actually now just investigate the raw transactions and see what we ought to do with that. So we've really simply there gone from having an idea about something we want to track across our customers and finding an anomaly, building that anomaly, and then finding someone who is potentially, based on all the other things they've done, um, worthy of investigation. And I can choose to mark them as reviewed as well. So I can indicate to my colleagues that I've done so. And additionally, I could also choose to allow list any of these customers if I was consistently seeing them but their behavior we deemed to be safe one other thing worthy of mentioning within the app is that you can also validate how your rules are performing so firstly we have this view down here which walks through how particular rules have contributed both in terms of number of times triggered but also score because you want to make sure that one score isn't massively dwarfing everything else maybe that would be a rule that requires tuning or if it's triggering a number of times it might require required tuning but in a different sense it might need a lower threshold and additionally we have several managed views which enable you to go into a particular view uh, rule so for example an almost daily transaction sum and view how that search has executed over time whether it's had any fails um, how long it's taking to run so is it becoming a potentially inefficient search for the same reason what its data cardinality looks like so is it producing lots of different field values and then also how many events is it producing each time? Is it potentially in need of tuning because it's contributing quite a lot of score to quite a lot of entities? And that is the Splunk app for behavioral profiling. If you'd like to get started with it, you can download it from Splunk Base today.